So as I mentioned, I do have one of these already created. So I'm not going to go over um, each and every line here. But what I did want to show you was how you get these shapes converted over into uh, sketch material. Because right now, if we say finish sketch and we try to extrude this, we're going to find that we're unable to do it. Uh, let me just give that a shot. So you'll notice that it's it's selecting the lines. That's fine. I could maybe do this as a surface, but I can't actually extrude this out as a solid. So that's fine. Uh, let's get back into the sketch here. So what you're going to want to do is come in and just basically sketch over all of this black line work. And then once you've done that, you'll have closed profiles that you can use to extrude. But there's a little bit of a trick when it comes to these guys here, these editable splines. So what we'll do for the time being, let's just take a look at how this is going to work. I'm going to want to make sure that my mode is not on construction. And I'm just going to start drawing lines. Now fortunately, the DWG allows me to grab endpoints. And I can just basically trace over these different paths. So now that I've got the one there, I can come in here and select the existing line work. So there's a bit of a trick to this. You'll notice that when I come in here, I can see a black line just kind of over top of that other one. What I want to do is deselect that. Or sorry, not deselect it, but I want to select the line that isn't the line that I just drew. Now is it vitally important that that's the one that you get? Not really. You should be able to create your profiles with this geometry in behind. But what I wanted to do was actually copy these over. So now that, uh, so CC, that's why I wanted to get rid of that was so that I didn't select the previous line. But just bear in mind they are a little bit harder to select than the ones that you've already drawn. So now I've got those four lines I can come up here to copy and I'll choose um, my base point. I'm going to grab that base point and set it down here and then one more here. Okay, so you can repeat that process on these other shapes. So these rectilinear shapes, they're pretty easy to take care of because you can just simply use the line. But over here, you're going to have to do things a little bit differently. So I'm going to start by coming to this line. And I just want to locate the end of that one. It looks like it's right about... Oh, it's even further back. Maybe not even that far. That looks like, oh, it's not even closed, that's why. Okay, so that's good, and notice that. So let's grab the end of that spline. We'll come right back. And I'm just going to curve this around. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to locate the end of that line that I've got. Looks like it's about, well, there's an end point there. So there's another little segment. So if I grab these guys here, these are the ones that we want to bear in mind. When I select these and I right click now, I'll get <clears throat> a drop down menu. And what I want to do is come find this selection here, convert to interpolation. And that'll change my spline to something that I can work with with the spline tools in Inventor. So I'm just going to do that with this one here as well. And I'll show you this process. So convert to interpolation. So now I'm going to come up to the spline tools and I'm going to actually use the interpolation spline. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to be clicking on each one of these control points. And you'll notice that you don't really have to do anything too spectacular. You can just click on these points and the spline itself is going to do everything that you want it to because 
the geometry essentially is already defined so you don't have to do anything too spectacular or creative there's no real big trick to this so once it's done you just click on that green check mark and come back up here and revisit this one is that closed looks like it so I'll do the same thing for this guy and then we should be able to extrude this D so we'll just do that quick and like I said I'm not gonna go doing all this because it did take a little bit of time and I want to keep the video as short and sweet as possible okay so it looks like we have the making of a D so I'll say finish sketch and now I should be able to come in here and do some extrusions so bear in mind the more complex your curved geometry is the longer it might take for inventor to say okay we've got to calculate all this it's gonna take this much time it shouldn't take that long but again that's gonna depend on the strength of your computer anyway notice now when I hover over this profile I'm actually getting a loop and I can use that so when I click on that as I click on these ones here I can increase this to say 300 and we should get an extrusion no maybe it doesn't like it because of this geometry that's already in there so let's let's come in and, and take a look maybe that's maybe that's the issue so I'll come back to that sketch I'm going to edit it and I know that there was problems with that because the um, the sketch doctor that little red X was showing so I know that there's some issues with the sketch but those issues could have just been issues that were there before okay so let's see if we can't oh well that's an easy fix let's grab a couple more so if you can't see it uh, if you can't see it on the video that I'm creating that pre-existing line work is very very fine so it's it's a little bit difficult to grab but if you hover over the line you'll see it switch back and forth from your construction line to the lines that were already there and this one is significantly thinner so let's try that extrude one more time and click on profile there you go now we've got an option here so I'm just going to change this back to 30 well, maybe 3 works better for this and you can see if I go back to profile and I click on on these guys they're actually extruding for me too okay so I can click OK and you'll notice that my sketch disappears the rest of it but now I've got some of the shapes of our logo so if I wanted to do the whole thing what I'll do is I'll just come back and I'll repeat that process for the S and the uh, the T anything that essentially has any of these splines um, <clears throat> but don't reinvent the wheel if you've got two S's or a uh, similar shape once you've got one profile complete just copy that over and scale it accordingly if you have to okay so now let's take a look at what we can do with the completed logo